Hi everybody, all my followers, uh, welcome to another video. Um, uh, this video today is on a 2003 or 2004 uh, Vauxhall Mariva. And uh, right, I only have 38 minutes left on my phone, so I can't take much more than that making this video. Anyway, so the car came to me to actually have an ECU replacement. So this is the next is this you that's going to be put in? I haven't done it yet because I'm going to take you through step by step uh, in order to try to avoid what happened on my uh, video or on one video that I've done uh, doing the same on uh, Vauxhall Astra and I had people there saying that everything I was showing there was pokey for views uh, was everything bullshit and God knows what else I had comments in there. They were not all uh, negative. I uh, thank you very much for the positive comments. Uh, thank you all. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it bit by bit, uh, step by step, so you understand everything that we're doing here. Uh, also, this procedure um, is the same for a lot of voxels out there, not just Marivas, different years, different cars. It's, it's the same procedure. Is the same steps pretty much. So first, why this car needs a, a ECM replacement or an engine control module replacement? Because of this, I'm going to start the engine, and you're going to see that the light came on. Okay. Now what we're going to do? I hope that uh, I always hope I never works. It's always the the glare, isn't it? So let's gonna start uh, Opcom or Voxcom, depends on the version you are using. I could be using my uh, uh, MS908P, my auto scanner, uh, but I'm gonna use this because it's a more affordable uh, option that you guys can get hold of. So you, you can actually follow this step by step, but doing this on a, on a diagnostic machine um, it, it would be very similar steps, so it wouldn't be nothing very different than uh, what we are doing here. Okay, we have a problem. This is my other laptop and it's not recognizing the Opcom. Why? I always have these problems. My other laptop, the battery is, is gone. Really? Okay, so for some reason that I don't even know myself, go figure. Uh, the drivers are now working on my other laptop. Uh, so I replaced the batteries, brought uh, this one, which is the final one. Uh, if you watch my videos, you I will, I will leave all the, the the links in the description below. Uh, when I went, uh, when I made a video of all the tools I have, I explained that I have two laptops. Uh, clones of each other pretty much anyway so on the other one the drivers are now working so back now fully working so I'm using Opcom or Voxcom whatever uh, 12 uh, 0309 a with the, the Opcom with the firmware 1.59 okay so we have identified the car now as you can see in there is the Mariva so Z16 SE so we can now go back and I want to show you why that uh, light in there is on that's gonna go Mariva engine so 16 SE is the first one in there fault codes so that's the only fault code uh, once again, I've done a video where I have actually repaired one of these uh, issues uh, And basically what happened is the contacts they break inside and It, it doesn't matter what you do <laughs> um, The the problem is that one so um, I know this car has been checked uh, the garage that brought me the car They guaranteed me that this is not the sensor is not the, the wiring they are convinced, uh, they, they said to me they diagnosed a, a faulty ECM. They brought me the ECM, so you can see it's engraved in there where it came from. Um, okay, so this is the faulty, uh, this is the fault. Uh, you can have different faults um, um, when these uh, modules fail. 
uh, you can have different faults um, I mean inside watch my other video and you'll see what I'm talking about the the, the bridge any bridge can break really and they break mainly because of the place where this ECU has been fitted which is in the engine block and with the heat uh, that's what happens okay so that's our fault uh, it doesn't matter if I delete the fault it might goes away but it will come back on straight away uh, so this is the problem and uh, we're gonna replace this U now the first thing we're gonna do and now is where the actual process of replacing this U starts um, first I don't have the pin code of either the actual ECU in the car or the ECU. The ECU came without a pin. Now, on Marivas, the pin code is quite easy to retrieve. I can retrieve the pin code even using Opcom through the dash. So that's not a problem. The problem is going to be into the ECU because I don't have the dash of the ECU, so I can't put the dash here, read the pin, and then I, I would know the pin from the ECU. So the only other way to do this is actually extract the pin from the ECU itself so rather than try to take the pin from there I'm gonna take it from the engine module so I'm gonna take the pin from the engine module of the ECU that's still in there at the moment uh, and then we will we'll, we'll go step by step we'll go then to the next stage but first what I'm gonna do I'm gonna take a screenshot of this page here so I, I'm gonna take you through and I'll do it so the video does, does, doesn't become too long so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a screenshot of this uh, mainly for the VIN number pretty much there's not a lot of here that I'm gonna be able to use on the next uh, ECU so just the VIN number but another thing that I need to do then is and the programming and what we're gonna do is we're gonna go uh, program variant co uh, configuration so I'm gonna have to take these settings here I'm gonna have to take the can configuration okay uh, and uh, well the actually VIN number so I can take everything here to be honest okay so I'll take a short uh, um, a screenshot of all these three configurations because we're gonna need them uh, in the, to then put them on this ECU so we'll take these I'm gonna do that and then I will come for the next step okay so it's taking a little bit long to note so here it is so the variant configuration then I've saved the car configuration or the car the can configuration and lastly or last the VIN number so we're gonna need this uh, later on for now we're gonna go to the next step uh, now um, these steps of getting hold of the pin codes obviously if you have the pin codes you don't need all this you can just forward to the end of the video or close to the end of the video where uh, we do the programming so uh, but if you don't uh, you're gonna have to get hold of these pins okay so we're gonna use uh, carprog because carprog has the facility to actually uh, get the pin code from the actually um, engine module so okay so this is a uh, can uh, ECU and I'm gonna use this is for the Delco uh, HSFI uh, 2.0 or 2.4 uh, this one is actually the 2.5 so I'm gonna use this driver here the one that is for uh, the general HFS level C it should work it's gonna try by the way I've been told this uh, module is exactly the same part number as the one that's on the car so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do uh, a read uh, all okay okay so 
there we have the data so we have the synchronization data we have the pin code and we have the VIN number okay uh, now I could from here I could reset this U wouldn't be a problem um, but we're not gonna do that uh, what we're gonna do uh, because the the ECU that's on the engine I, I'm not interested in actually reset that that uh, ECU it doesn't bother me um, the one I'm gonna have to reset is actually this one okay so what I'm gonna do once again uh, we are going to um, save a screenshot of this all this information and then we'll go into the next step okay so I saved uh, a screenshot of that and what we're gonna do next is replace the engine ECU so we're gonna turn the ignition off and we're gonna replace the ECU okay I'm um, now removing the last screw and we're gonna take one out so we took that one out I'll put this one in uh, like that Apologize for the noise. Yeah, doing some works over there in the road. So I'll finish to put this on and then we'll we'll continue. Okay, let's gonna put the plugs back on. And that's it. very well today okay so we have now put uh, the new uh, the new ECU and uh, what we need to do now is get the pin from that other ECU that's in there and that's what we're going to do now so actually I want to show you that uh, if I turn the ignition on we're gonna have that light blinking uh, because obviously the immobilizer is activated so if I try to start the engine as you can see it doesn't start okay so let's kinda then uh, get the pin of this module of this is you so we can then reset the module okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do read all again and hopefully that will replace the data from the old ECU from the original ECU with the data of the replacement
So hopefully you have seen all this changing. You can see it's a different pin code now. And uh, I hope the glare is not... Uh, you can see that. So there is. So from here I could reset the ECU now. Oops, using CarProg. Nope. Uh, I could reset the ECU now. I could... Um, I could have saved the... Uh, IMO synchronization, which would be the pin and all that, and then load it on the next on this, and I could have done everything here, to be fair with you. But I want to do it using CarProg, uh, Opcom. Uh, I want to do it using Opcom because it is, is a more maybe affordable uh, option. Uh, mainly if you have the pin codes, you don't need nothing of this. So that's why I'm, I'm I want to use that. So what I'll do now is I'm going to save a screenshot of this as well, and then we're going to connect uh, Opcom again or Voxcom, whatever you want to call it, and then we'll move into the next step. Okay, so we are we are back on Opcom, and I've just logged in into the engine ECU, and as you can see, we have all those codes for keys, uh, body control module, instruments, there's a few other codes in there. Uh, I haven't tried to delete them yet, uh, there's no point really because they will just come back. So we just go back now. Uh, we're going to go to programming. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to reset the ECU. Okay. So it's going to ask me for the pin code. Remember we are on the engine ECU. And the pin code we want is the pin code we uh, took last. We are resetting the ECU. So we need the original pin code of the ECU that's in there. The ECU, the second hand ECU that came to be fitted. We can't use here the pin code of the car yet. Because obviously it will be the wrong pin code. So I will just open that. And the pin code was 3854. 3854. So we're going to go back into there. So 3854. 3854. And we're going to press OK. So, it gives you this message here, please wait, reset completely, successfully. So we're going to go back, we're going to go back, and we're going to go close the engine ECU, and we're going to turn the ignition off, leave it off for a few seconds. And now we're turning ignition back on and you're going to see that the light is going to carry on flashing obviously and uh, what we're going to do now is we're not we're not going to go in there now because we can't program the ECU through the engine uh, through the ECU itself we're going to have to go into another body perhaps yeah immobilizer okay now and the immobilizer we're going to go and uh, not special functions, isn't it? No, no, this is to reset. We want program security code. Now, as you can see, it just brings the same security code. If I put this code, it's going to be wrong because remember, this code is from the engine, the, is from the engine module that came to be fitted on this car, it's not the pin code from this car. So, we're gonna to have to go there and open that picture in there, that screenshot, and the pin code for this car is 2042. So that's the pin code we need now, 2042. Uh, double check, 2042? Yeah, 2042. So Vox 2042. So let's gonna go programming, security. Uh, where is the window now? I hate when this happens. Shouldn't have minimized that. Now it's gonna. Ah. So 2042, correct? 2042. It's gonna delete this old one. So 2042. And we press OK. And we are in. So programming. All these options become available. And what we want to do now is we want to program an immobilizer output. Okay. Now, 
Oh no, sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. My bad. Uh, program immobilize a function. Uh, and he has asked me uh, basically what has been installed. And I'm going to tell him only the engine ECU has been in installed. Okay. I'm going to press OK. Yes. And as you can see, you get a message there saying successfully programmed. Okay. Now uh, we're going to go back and we're going to close the immobilizer. I think I'm doing the right steps, guys. And we're going to turn ignition off. I've done this last time quite quite some time ago and sometimes I forget the steps but I think I'm doing it right so let's gonna turn these on again and now we're gonna go to uh, back back from here back engine Okay, now we're going to do programming, uh, and we're going to do no, no, not to what I'm doing. Program uh, variant configuration. So let's going to open the variant configuration picture. Gonna go there. We're going to do load. So we want a uh, variant configuration. It's going to open that. So, so I want uh, cruise control not present. Which is not present. Transmission coding is manual. Correct. Air conditioning not present. So it was present on here. So we need to put this not present. And lastly, ABS, I'm sure is present, so that's it. So we change the air conditioning because there's no air conditioning on this car, and we do perform coding successfully programmed. Okay, let's gonna go to can configuration. So not present on both. So let's gonna open here the can configuration screenshot, which is in there. Can conf, so not present on both. So that's fine, we don't need to touch that. And so we just go back. And last one, vehicle identification number. We're gonna go open this once again. Open, VIN number, open. Okay, so we have W0L0X. So W0L0X, so that's fine. So that's the same. Then we want C753. C75. Okay, it changes in there. So C753. Then we have three uh, four two nine four four six eight. Four two nine four four six eight. So four two nine four four six eight. Let me just make sure. Four two nine four four six eight. So that's fine. And we do right. Successfully programmed. That's it. I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna close this. Back. It's gonna cycle the ignition again. And now I think we need to program the IDs. Uh, we might need to program now the body control module. Uh, and then the, the cluster. So let me see. So we still have a, a flashing light. It's gonna go 
back just before let's gonna go to engine just see what's in there just curiosity see if it is the okay actually sorry about that guys let me try to Obviously these AC throw up because there was no AC. So let's gonna clear the fault codes and see exactly what comes back. Okay, so body control module ID and the ID from the instrument cluster, instrument control module. So that's why that's still flashing. So let's gonna close that. Close. Oh, not choose. Back, it's gonna go body. Instrument cluster. Okay, so programming instrument cluster reset instrument cluster program program. So let's gonna do a reset instrument cluster. Okay, it's gonna ignition off. Wait a few seconds. Ignition on. It's gonna go to instrument cluster again. I just logged out while the camera was pointing to the cluster. And now let's gonna program instrument cluster again. Successfully programmed, so let's go and do OK. Close. And let's gonna turn ignition off. And now while in, in, rather, while the ignition is off, we're gonna go to engine D16. <sighs> turn ignition on. So otherwise it's not gonna find it. It's gonna go to fault codes. It's gonna clear this okay so as you can see the cluster the instrument cluster ID is gonna ready because we cleared and we programmed it again so all we need to do now is do the same for the body control module and hopefully everything will be just fine in the end okay so let's gonna go body body control module Okay, programming. Uh, programming there. Okay, security code uh, 2042. Okay, now uh, I need to reset BCM. Yes. So, reset completely successfully, uh, at least. Um, uh, please wait at least 10 seconds after you have turned the ignition. Have you turned off the ignition? So, ignition off. We're gonna wait 10 seconds at least. Okay, it's about 20 seconds now. Ignition on. And now we're gonna program BCM. And ask me for the pin code, obviously, because it's a like a blank BCM. So press OK. Press OK. And it tells me uh, successfully programmed. Now I'm gonna just make sure I can log in with this code. And yes, I can. All my options are back. So we're gonna go back. Back, close, and we're gonna turn ignition off again. You can see the light stop flashing, so we're gonna turn ignition off, and we're gonna go choose engine. <laughs> okay. 
turn the ignition back on. It's gonna see what's gonna happen to the light now. So it stays on, which is pretty much normal, I think. It's gonna see now under the engine ECU which fault codes we have in there. Okay, so not present as you can see. So we're gonna clear the faults and hopefully we'll be left with no faults. No DTCs. Back, close. And now let's gonna. So the light is off now because we delete that code. Let's gonna try to start this engine. And there he is. Engine is running. As you probably can hear. And there is no more lights. Which proves that uh, this second hand ECU is actually in good conditions. So, um, to recap very quick. Um, what you would have to do is... If you have the pin codes, uh, skip the process of get hold of pin codes and all that. If you have the pin codes, all you need to do is uh, remove ignition off, remove the engine control module, put the replacement uh, in there, put the other one in there, uh, get uh, Opcom, log in into the engine control module, reset the ECU, okay, uh, with the pin code that you have from the second hand ECU. Then go into the immobilizer system and do and program the new uh, installed um, engine control module using the pin from the car. Uh, then come off there, go into, um, you should be left with two codes, which is the ID uh, programming um, configuration. Uh, go to reset uh, the body control module and program it again using the pin from the car. Do the same with the instrument cluster, then go back into the engine control module and program the variant configurations and the CAN configurations and the VIN number. Um, and you should be left with uh, the car back on the road. There's no need to program keys, there's no need to program the immobilizer uh, system itself. Uh, I mean, the immobilizer that is behind there, you don't need to touch in here. Uh, the only thing you need to do is, like I said, if you don't have the pin codes, uh, you might want to use CarProc if you do have CarProc and um, you can get hold of the pin codes the same way I did. Um, I hope this video has been much more clear than the one I've done uh, for the Astra and you guys now understand a little bit more in depth um, what we are, uh, we're actually doing here. Um, so I think that's it for today guys. We have the car back on the road. We're going to have a happy customer uh, with no lights on now. Uh, no DCU, that can be whatever they want to do with it. It doesn't bother me. Uh, so that's it, guys. Um, what uh, what to say? Um, oh, just one more thing. Obviously, I'm using Opcom. I said this at the start of the, sh the video. You could use any other tool capable of um, working with this uh, immobilizer system uh, systems. Uh, my DS708 used to be able to do this. Uh, my new uh, MS908P, uh, hopefully, I, I haven't tried it yet, but I'm sure you can do this. And there is loads of other tools out there, guys, that you can do this. And the process is pretty much the same. Okay? So, with no further ado, let's kind of finish this video. Guys, um, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope there's information here that you are going to be able to utilize um, uh, to help you out. Uh, any questions, comments, please put them below. And uh, like always, guys, thank you for watching.